guys. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to Blown for Good. Um, today, we're going to do a live with Mike Rinder. Hi, everyone. And there's Mike and Claire Headley. Hey, hello. And Christy Colmoran. Hi, Rinder. everybody. Here, let's move. Um, <laughs> let's move us. So there, there we go. We like that better. Just so oh. we can keep all the good stuff on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> old stuff at the top. Um, thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us today, guys. Um, this is sort of a, I don't know what, this is just an SPTV live stream. This is not really part of any series or anything that I'm doing on my channel or Mike's doing on his channel. Um, but um, we wanted to talk about um, Marty Rathbun because uh, for many, many years, um, he was very, uh, a very trusted um, uh, very high level executive within Scientology. And, um, and then he, um, escaped and he, well, he actually escaped multiple times, three times, he escaped three different times. And each of those times, each of the first two times he was what they call recovered and brought back. And then, um, that last time he escaped, he sort of got uh, way too far off the reservation for them to reel him back in. And, um, <laughs> and he, and he started causing, um, a lot of, lot of problems for Scientology. Like just in, like, I'm pretty sure he was responsible for a great exodus of, um, yes. Scientology, um, Sea Org members, staff members, and um, civilian Scientologists that were giving money to Scientology because they knew that what he was saying about Scientology was true. And so um, that's sort of that's I guess that's a, is that good enough backdrop? And we could kind of fill in the blanks as we go. But well, I I think that we should should um, spend a little time explaining the significance of. Marty, um, to us and to Scientology, um, uh, because he was a really big deal. Like he was a really big deal in Scientology. I mean, he was basically, uh, to all intents and purposes, David Miscavige's right-hand man and main enforcer, uh, for many, many years, even, uh, you know, he blew, uh, left the Sea Org without authorization a couple of times. And as Mark mentioned, he was brought back by David Miscavige himself, like flying to meet with him in a hotel in New Orleans or wherever it was that Marty had happened to end up. And he came back uh, in disgrace, as anybody who had blown the Sea Org was always in disgrace. But he came back and ended up back in the same position each time. He ended up back as the inspector general of RTC. After the... escaping. Right. Yes. And, and I remember... despite the fact that it's a disqualification for Religious Technology Center, if you have escaped, you can no longer hold an executive position. But that was waived in Marty's case. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know which time it was that he escaped, but it was I want to say it was the time before he en ended up going um, to the free winds with Greg Wilhair. Was that yep. the first or second time he escaped? I think that was number two. OK, when he did that, um, I was being interrogated in one of these religious technology center interrogation rooms. And um, the person who was interrogating me left like they had to go do something. And they were like, you need to wait here and I'll be back. And, uh, and they said, I could be gone a half hour, good about an hour, but you can't leave. And I was like, okay, fine. Anyway, after they left, um, you know, you, boredom sets in pretty quickly, especially when you're in the middle of an interrogation. And so I went through their shredding basket that was in the room and, um, and I read all the RTC shredding that they had. And one of the things in there was, a, it said, uh, Marty Rathbun, Greg Wilhair sabbatical. And it was that they're going to go, go on a sabbatical. And I'm like, isn't Mar didn't Marty just escape recently? And now he's going on sabbatical. And I didn't even know what sabbatical meant. I was like, I had they to look it up. <laughs> they created a new term just for Marty. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Exactly. And then I was like, wait a minute. He went to the free winds to go training and get auditing after escaping. And then they brought him back. And so to me, that blew my mind. And then when I mentioned it to somebody, um, they were like, oh, that's the second time. 
or that's he's he this happened before and i was sort of like what it happened during the irs um yeah uh handling during in the early right 90s. afterwards yeah like immediately afterwards maybe a week less than a week after the exemption was granted yeah he just went okay i've had enough i'm out of here yeah he's like that was good i did it now i'm out peace well out, he guys. started <laughs> getting i, I mean Look, nobody is excluded from the insanity of Miscavige. And Marty took a lot of abuse from Mark, yeah. David Miscavige. Miscavige was telling him that he was a suppressive person. Yes. Right up until the day he escaped. That's <laughs> at least from what Marty told me. That was a huge reason for why he escaped. He's well, like, well, if I'm a suppressive, then I'm out. <laughs> I I 100 percent believe that, Claire. Yeah. I, I mean, that he did that basically to everybody yeah. yeah like and and though marty was seen by a lot of people within the sea org and within scientology as you know this guy who somehow managed to escape the wrath of miscavige because they didn't see that part of it they just saw him being the enforcer so right. he was always the bad guy in their mind because he was carrying out the orders of miscavige he took a lot, a lot, a lot of shit. And yeah. I know because I was around him, like Marty and I were the two people that were around Miscavige the most when it came to external matters. When something was going on, a legal case, a, a media flap, whatever it was that was happening, it was Marty and I pretty typically were the ones who were with Miscavige. And those things that came up were always priority. They were what Miscavige focused on. If, if there was an external situation, that was always given priority for him. And so I spent a lot of time with Marty. And I, I can't say that when I was... In the Sea Org, I considered him a good friend. I don't think anybody was really friendly with Marty. No, nope. he, he, he was not a friendly person. No, he he had the uh, RTC cold chrome steel thing down. Yeah, and he, he also he and and there I don't think there was any at the anybody at the base who was like, oh, he's not a big deal. Like if he comes. It, it, it was a wherever very... he went, wherever he went, when he showed up at CCN, when he showed up at any other org, everybody, he was like Miscavige in some ways, you know, there was just this godly, it's Marty Rathbun. Everyone treated him like he was the second in command to Miscavige. All yeah, the he... lowly, all the lowly Sea Org members worshipped him. If he came in and he, you know, he carried a big stick, he had a very serious face, and we were all like, "Okay, oh shit, Marty Rathbun is here." That's that's who he was. Yep. Yeah, yeah, uh, and 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 we did a um, we did a thing in the in the shoot crew where we we messed up a film, and when we and 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 as a result of that, there was an investigation of all of the people in the film unit. And Marty was the uh, the uh, the one Lead running. Investigator. <laughs> yeah, he was the chief investigator. And the and there was a girl. And the, and we told this in the the Louis. I told this story in the Louis Thoreau um, uh, project, uh, my Scientology film or my Scientology movie. And um, but Marty was uh, the, there was a, a young uh, woman that was in, interrogating me, giving me a sec check, sec check, and her name was Laura Dolan, and she was sitting in the in the counselor's seat and i was on the other side holding onto the cans of the e-meter and marty was standing behind her in the room with us so if anyone in scientology knows when you get interrogated it's just the counselor and you but um normally if you're being interrogated by religious technology center they have a little earpiece in and marty would be talking to her in the earpiece but he decided we're gonna skip to the good part on this one and i'm just gonna stand behind her and in the room he's like ask him again ask him again ask him again <laughs> and i wouldn't admit to the thing that david miscavige sent marty down to make me admit to because i didn't do it 
And um, so then he goes, okay, we're going to take a break. And we walked out of the counseling room to this little back room that was right near there. And we were standing there and he goes, are you going to answer her question or one? I said, I've answered every single time. And just out of nowhere, he cold cocked me. Pun we're standing right in front of each other. He punched me, boom, right in the face. And I stood there and I took it and I looked and I just kind of looked back up at him. I said, you can punch me another 50 times, but I'm not going to say things that didn't happen because somebody wants me to say that. And so that was sort of the end of it. And he was sort of like, but the best part was the there was another girl that was standing there who was like the report back, like go run up back up to Dave and Miscavige and tell him what's happening. When Marty punched me, she started crying. <laughs> wow. That her name was Charlotte Geisler. Charlotte, whatever, Helt. She Charlotte was, Helt. Yeah. Charlotte Helt. And, and can I just say that's a normal human reaction? It totally like, is. Like this isn't supposed to be happening. Like people aren't supposed to be punching each other at church. You know exactly. what I mean? Like and that's yeah. a normal human reaction. Like what the hell's going on? This this guy just got punched in the face. Yeah, yeah. not even at church. This is where everybody has given committed to a billion years. Right. Like yeah. they have no life. Anyway, and yet so, this is how no, we treat them. At, so uh, that yeah. was one of my earliest experiences with Marty. Like, oh, this guy is not to be messed with. He doesn't right. play around. Yeah. When right. he's doing an investigation, uh, it's going to come out the way he thinks it's supposed to come out. You know, yeah. they, yep. that's the other thing. And, and whenever there's an investigation where David Miscavige is involved, the facts are already known by David Miscavige. He has already determined what the facts are and everybody needs to fall into their place in the story and agree that that's the way it went down. And I was just like, I ain't doing it. I, I just, I don't know what to tell you. You can, we can keep going and around in circles, but that was sort of the way Marty handled things internally. I'm not sure how he did it on the outside, but internally that was sort of, it was a, a Gestapo style um, investigation and handling. And there was a, a trail of destruction when one of these things happened where people went to the RPF and people, is, and a lot of times when Marty would come down, um and do one of these investigations um in in multiple occasions that i remember people would escape during this thing like there's so much pressure being put out on everybody that people will pop and then usually the narrative would change because it's like oh well now we know it was now we know happened. who the who the who is now we know what happened and then and then everybody's like who like when somebody <laughs> escaped everything bad that had happened for the prior four years or so would get oh that was the person who did this and they did that and, they, and you'd just be like that person didn't even have anything to do with half of those things how did they end up being the who or the why for that right yeah i remember after after marty and i had left the the story that went around was we were responsible for crush redging yeah i have never gotten a dollar from anybody ever in my life in Scientology. And I don't think Marty had either. Nothing. You never. just weren't, you just w didn't work in that area of management in any way, <laughs> shape or form. No, any event. So I, I was, I was wanted to sort of set the stage because I think everybody who is watching this knows that Marty had, you know, turned tail and became a um, uh, an apologist again or even an attacker of people like us ultimately but I want to uh, sort of establish what it took to get there and perhaps a little more explanation of why it might have happened why this might have uh, have occurred um, and, and you know, Christy and I were talking about it earlier, and Marty is uh, or was a very significant person in the story of Scientology when he was in and then when he got out. Yeah. Because yeah. when he got out, it was huge. That was huge. It was and nothing to begin with. In yeah. fact, Scientology spread a word that Marty Rathman had died. Yes, I remember that. Yeah. And in fact, in fact, when Marty called me, I think it was 2009. Yeah. I remember his opening statement was, "Hey, it's Marty. You may have heard I died." And I was like, 
What? Yeah. Well, we <laughs> we did. actually we actually had a death certificate of a Mark C. Rathbun that that lived in the area where they had said he went in in yes. Northern no California. No kidding, I did. Yes. I've never even heard that Mark. Oh yeah. no, I had it. I tracked it down and I got an actual death certificate and it was everything matched up except i didn't know marty well enough to know when he was born or any of that stuff but i was like but it I, seems I knew about him well right enough to age. know his middle initial was c and right. that his name ended was mark with a k so yeah, yeah right. i mean if marty hadn't left hadn't left and hadn't spoken out and done what he did a lot of people wouldn't be where they are today and wouldn't be out. So he was pivotal in my story. He was pivotal in me and my ex-husband, Chris, leaving. And Chris started speaking to Marty. That was the first person he started talking to. And then when I was brave enough to get on the phone with Marty, I knew I had crossed a line and I knew that was the end of it for me. And I, you know, that was in 2009. And that was when a lot of people were starting to talk to Marty, read his blog. He started a blog. He created a huge, huge movement, honestly, and changed the landscape of that whole time period of, of you know, he's contributed a huge amount to the people leaving and, and everything that's happened now. And he he went and did the um, the newspaper. What was it called, Mike? The the truth Same key times. Yeah, the you truth guys time. all you you guys were all involved in that, but Marty yep. was one of the pivotal people that got it started. He went and met with Joe Childs and Tom Tobin and started to speak to them and said, "Hey, let's I want to talk. I want to speak. I'm finally ready." And then you guys all joined in and then a whole bunch of other people joined in and that was a huge tipping point for this whole entire movement. Like that that back then there was nothing really happening. It was pretty quiet. And yeah. Marty Rathbun was kind of the the person that came in and did that. And it, it dramatically affected my life, at, you know, on a personal basis. Like I was talking to Marty Rathbun. He was the person. I wasn't talking to anyone else. And that was how I left sort of Scientology was from my communication with him and how I got declared. And yeah. I'm just one person that, and there's many more who have that kind of story of connecting up with Marty, connecting up with his blog at that time. It was, you know, and one of the things I want to add that was different about him that made it easier for some people was that he wasn't at that time throwing out the entirety of Scientology. He was speaking out about the church, right? So many of us who still were figuring ourselves out were like, oh, okay, I can relate to that. I can relate to the fact that this is about the abuses in the church. I don't know yet how I feel about L. Ron Hubbard and the technology and, you know, people who had wins and gains and whatever weren't yet ready to throw away the entirety of Scientology, but they were understanding and connecting to this thing that Marty was talking about, which was the abuses of the church and the crush regging and the bullshit ideal orgs and all that kind of stuff. And that was what he was a little bit different than some of the past people that had spoken out about would just throw the whole thing away. He started out just talking about the church. So for many of us, that was something we could go, okay, I want to hear more about this. I don't want to hear about how L. Ron Hubbard's bad. I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> you know? And so that was a good gradient for a lot of people who connected with Marty at that time. Yeah. He offered a, a gradient Kool-Aid. Yeah. yeah. It was exactly. watered down Kool-Aid. It wasn't even the, it, well, it wasn't even Kool-Aid because, well, you know, he, I guess in some ways he was, he was pushing, so pushing Scientology, but he was also really exposing the abuses and we could all see that for what it was and go, okay, that's, that makes sense. And I don't know that personally, I don't know that I would have been like connected up with him if it was like, oh, the whole thing's bad. I was like, well, I'm not, I don't know about that. You know, I needed something that made sense to me that I could go, yeah, this is bad. Okay. And, and just peel it away bit by bit, because sometimes you're just not ready. You're not ready to just throw the whole thing away. You need a little bit of time. You need some handholding. You need some. And Marty was kind of doing that himself. He hadn't yet thrown Scientology out. He he knew David Miscavige and the church was bad, but he didn't yet know how he felt about Scientology, the technology. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. And I and I would tell Claire and I would have discussions about this when new people would come out and I would tell them, just let them do their thing. You know, they'll, yeah. they just need to be in the world for a little bit and they you need to. You guys were so good at that. You guys were awesome at that. Cause when I came out and I spoke to you and Claire, it was like, you, that's exactly what you said to me. And it was so nice as opposed to my ex-husband who was like, 
yeah, come on, like get like figure it out already. And I was like, wait, I'm not ready <laughs> well, yet. I just I, you were more is, patient, you know. Well, I'm I'm I made up a stupid thing at the time. The time in Scientology is directly proportional to the time it takes you to get out of Scientology. <laughs> and um, because some people in were in for 40 years, it right. doesn't. Yeah. You can't just I was be like, born guess into what? It from from yeah, yeah, like yeah. guess what? It's bullshit. Parents, exactly. Like it, yeah. you can't just say it's bullshit one day. And you're just like, oh, okay, it's bullshit. Like it, right. it took some. It took some time. And I think that's one of the things that a lot of people liked about Marty was that he was giving us little pieces and, you know, explaining things that were happening. And we were like, okay, that makes sense. Okay. This makes sense. So. Yep. And, and, you know, there was at the time this um, independent Scientology movement that had sort of grown up around Marty. Yeah. And it gave and it gave those people a, a group to kind of join as they're leaving their other group. Like, oh, okay, I I've lost everything, but look, there's here's some people who still think like me, and I can talk to them, and we can have some something in common, and we can support each other. And that was that was needed for a lot of us. That was helpful for a lot of us when we left. Right. Yeah. And and, and you know, uh, Christy and I actually hosted the first gathering of independent Scientologists. We did. Uh, like, there were other people who had got, who had left and become squirrels and have been targeted by RTC, you know, David Mayo. and But now the Inspector General of RTC was one of the squirrels. Yeah, in yeah, Scientology, right. was anyone who leaves Scientology officially or le doesn't practice Scientology under the 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 d direction of Scientology, if they want to do Scientology in the real world outside on their own, Scientology labels them squirrels because they're squirreling the technology. And L. Ron Hubbard has written probably hundreds of thousands of words about squirrels and what they do and why they, they gather do nuts around them. That's what, that's why they're yeah. called squirrels. Yeah. <laughs> they, alter, anyway. they alter it, they change it and they don't do it properly. So they're, yeah, not, they're not really, they're not really proper Scientologists because they're not doing it with the church. And at the end of the day, Scientology doesn't make any money off of those people. Right. That right. is exactly. the main reason why they're yeah. squirrels. <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. So, so just a little more backstory here. So a part of this independent Scientology movement was um, this gathering that we held at our house. We were living in Tarpon Springs at the time. And I guess there was like 50 or 60 people came yeah, to this first huge. one. A lot of our old friends, people that we had known forever, Jackson and, and Tiziano and Jamie and, and like there were all yeah. sorts of people there. Um, and Marty uh, had hooked up with this woman when he was in Texas called Monique or Mosey as everybody knew her and he wanted to get married. So we concocted this little plan that I would register myself as a reverend of the independent church of Scientology with the Pinellas County and perform the wedding ceremony. And that this would drive Miscavige and Scientology absolutely nuts because we were now um doing the independent scientology thing and getting sort of credence for it and i went and got this license and told them who i was and they were like okay no problem so <laughs> we i performed the wedding of monique and marty at our house in our During this Independence Day weekend in July July 5th or July 4th weekend of 2010. I'm going to show you, pull up a little picture here. Oh, I can't pull it up. Mark's Wh which one is it? it? The first one. Says With uh, wedding. the four shot? Yeah. Because this is actually from Marty's blog. First Independent Scientologist wedding. Oh, look how young I look. Oh my God. <laughs> my oh my dear. I shouldn't have I should have blurred this face out. <laughs> oh, stop. It's our most good. sincere thanks to the right Reverend Michael J. Rinder and organizing wizard extraordinaire Christy King Colbrand for pulling off a spectacular first independent Scientologist wedding. You two are the best. And this is in oh, 2010. 2010. Yeah. July 5th, 2010. You can see it right up there at the top. Yes. And then, Mark, pull up the next 
the next picture. That's me with the, the two ring ceremony. And the next one, here I am giving a little toast. And we, ha we have this banner made. Congratulations, Marty and Mosey. And this is actually taken from a video. And that video is still on Marty's blog. And the video is of today. the whole ceremony today. I copied this from his blog today. Wow. The whole ceremony is on there, and I'll put a link in the in the um, in the description. in the description, so you can go see that video if you want. Um, it's you'll see a lot of people in there probably that you recognize. Yeah. Okay, so go to the next one. Um, there you go, and look at this: July fourteenth, two thousand and ten. Marty is writing about the Headleys and what wonderful people they are. And I got together with them and their lawsuit is complete. Like Scientology is lying. And, you know, it, it was sort of over the top of how wonderful Mark and Claire Headley are. And I'm, I brought this or I wanted to show this because today Mark and Claire Headley uh, brought a phony law. According to Marty, they brought a phony lawsuit. They were, you know, trying to, to make money out of Scientology or whatever the, the line is that gets you that he, Scientology he, wants to use. In this post, he actually did a declaration for the lawsuit and he exactly. mentions it in this document. <laughs> yeah, it's he, there's he a link submitted for an it. affidavit in support of what we were saying that, yeah, that's exactly how they do it. Yeah. Right. And he just and as, also, just as we, we submitted forget, affidavits yeah, in support of his lawsuit subsequently as well. Absolutely. Yeah. We all and did. also a lot of people may or may not know this, but I wrote a book in 2009 called Blown for Good Behind the Iron Curtain of Scientology. And Marty wrote the foreword to that book. And right. that wasn't an accident because at the time, um, Mike. Um, I don't think you were speaking out at that time in 2008, 2009. I think you uh, were. It started in 2009 in June with the Truth Rundown. That's yeah, right. Yep. That so we'd already finalized the book. Yeah, we are. But regardless, Marty was the only person that was at the property for the entire time that I was at the property. Minus, I think he, he escaped maybe six months before I did. Um, he left in 2004. Um, is when he did his final escape and I left in 2005. Um, but, um, and even in when he wrote the foreword, because we didn't agree, he believed that Hubbard was good and Scientology, the organization was bad. And I was very adamant, the whole thing is a giant con and everybody involved uh, is uh, Hubbard, Miscavige, Scientology. The whole thing is just a big giant con and they're ripping off people and all that. Um, and Marty and I both escaped on a motorcycle and I, that's how I got the idea to leave and leave on the motorcycles. Like Marty did it. And who's going to get out of here. That's higher than Marty. Um, but, um, but when, when he did that, he wrote the forward and he sent it to me and he said, you obviously you can, uh, you can edit it because we don't share the same view. And I kind of mentioned that in the forward and I was like, no, dude, that's the whole reason why I'm having you do it is because we do not agree. And I think your viewpoint is worth, is worth something, even if we don't agree. And, and, and that's sort of a thing in Scientology where everything has to be black or everything has to be white. There can never be gray. There can never be, we, ha we, we have to pick a team and that's it. That's, yep. that's, that's, that's the way it is. And right. I've always been of the mind, no, that's how they get you is they put you in teams and then right. you're kind of stuck with your team, whether you agree with your own team or not, you might have disagreements even with your team. So I'm like, no, I think there are some kind of, um, value of not agreeing. And, and, you know, even to this day, Scientology still plays that game of trying to separate everybody into different teams. But so even though, uh, and I told him, I said, I'm going to print your forward exactly as you wrote it. And I'm not modifying a single letter. And to him, he kind of was like, what? Like he made a big deal about that uh, right. of saying, and then when the book ended up coming out, he said it, he did a whole thing about the book and Hey, even though we didn't, we don't agree on this. M Mark is like, yeah, okay, fine. We don't agree. We don't have to agree. Whatever. Yep. Right. <laughs> so, um, and I, and the, and the main reason I did that, I said, cause Marty was there, but also cause I knew 
if Marty wrote the forward, it's going to make it a very, very tricky thing for them to challenge the book because how can the number two guy in Scientology agree with me and everyone else in Scientology is uh, disagrees? That doesn't work right. for your, your little narrative. So Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So during this time period from 2010 onwards for a number of years, um, I worked very, very closely with Marty on a number of legal cases and seeing the FBI and like all sorts of stuff. Uh, we were flying all over the country constantly. Like we flew in to help Debbie cook when she got sued by Scientology and found Ray Jeffrey through, you know, it was like a lot of stuff. We were going, uh, visiting with the FBI in Los Angeles when John Brousseau left, I was the one that took him to the FBI in San Antonio, had them fly out there. I mean, it was I have to like tell you one thing about that real quick. When the FBI, the FBI called us and when we were in Burbank, when we lived in out on Los Angeles and they said, we have somebody who just escaped and somebody who's helping him escape. And we want to know if we can put them up at your house in Burbank as sort of like a safe house. And I'm like, are we really being asked by the FBI to be a safe house? And, yeah, and the best part was, yeah, and, and the then best part Marty, was they were like, we think you might know this person. And we're that's like, right. well, who yeah. is it? It was John Marty. Bursa, and we're like, of course we know John Bursa. <laughs> we knew about John Bursa, but we didn't know about Marty. So yes. when John Brousseau showed up, Marty was with him. And I was yes. sort of right. like, holy moly, you guys are the ones the FBI is sending us to stay here. <laughs> anyway, but regardless, um, uh, Marty was a major player on the, major. Bad, on the bad team against on the, the Scientology's enemy list at this point with all this stuff. Right. Ma Marty and Monique were harassed with yeah. fair game tactics worse than anybody I have ever seen. Yeah. I, I mean, literally worse every than day. anybody every single day, 24 hours a day, door. people knocking on the door that, that goofball John Allender with his stupid hat and squirrel busters t-shirt knocking on the door, trying to intimidate Mosey and the GoPros on all of their the heads, GoPros <laughs> on their heads, driving around on golf carts, Writing like them. three houses on their street that yeah. their sole purpose was to film them. R riding, boats, riding boats behind their house in the little canal. Like oh. paddle boats. Them with, with cameras from a Remember boat. they had the paddle boats? I'm but on a was, boat. They even yeah. shot, the Squirrel Busters even shot music videos about I know. spying on Marty. I mean, it was, it was incessant. It was, it was literally, it was, I mean, it was such a big deal that media, um, media outlets from all over the world were flying in to film it because it was, they were doing it 100% overtly, yes. just noisy investigation. And they didn't care who filmed them. They were being filmed by every, by German media, U S media, Danish media. It was, it was, it was kind of like, it was like SPTV was. They wouldn't leave him now. alone. It was, they... it was that then. He was spraying them with a hose from his front yard to get them to leave his property. And they would just stay there. He was And that was another music hose. video that Marty yeah. made. He made a car wash at the car. He was literally washing his car. It's actually a hilarious, to this day, it stands up. He's washing his car and these protesters are walking around. And in the middle of washing the car, he just squirts them in the face for a second yeah. and then goes back to washing the car. And in the background, at the car wash is the song playing while he's doing and I mean, he was good spirited about it in that video, but this was wearing him down. Him and yeah. those being worn Big down. Time. And they weren't just at their house. Anytime Mike and Marty went anywhere, they had so many PIs on them constantly, like so many incidents. You know, there were times where they their doors were slammed and cars and all kinds of like drama with cars being chased and being followed. And it was incessant. It was it was Marty and Mike. And, you know, our family that also had this. But anytime those two were together, the PIs were like hot to trot all over. Oh, they, they were waiting for us always at the airport. Dave LeBeau. I mean, there's a video of us walking up and there's Dave LeBeau sitting. Dave, what are you doing here? I'm here to follow you. I'm going to see exactly where you're going. What are you doing? Yeah. And then the videos of us with seven 
PI cars following us down Pacific Coast Highway from Jason's house. And, and they crashed into the you FBI. one time. It was yeah. an accident one time. Oh, that, yeah. was a, that was outside of Tiziano's house. They yes. ran into us. But this was, this was the way that Scientology was trying to shut down Marty Rathbun. Yeah. And when they started then stretching it over into going after Mosey, and Mosey had never been a Scientologist. She was, she was sort of converted to, you know, Marty-style Scientology by Marty. She yeah. wasn't ever in Scientology per se. She met Marty, and they got together, and then she, he started, you know, auditing her, and she sort of became kind of a Scientologist for a while while he was being an independent Scientologist. But when they started going after her at her work and sending dildos to her at her office and like going after her bosses and the people that she worked with, that was when um, Ray Jeffrey, who had represented, we had found Ray to represent Debbie Cook. And Ray is a very, very good lawyer just who's in San Antonio. And he helped Marty and Mosey move to another house where they would theoretically have more privacy. And Scientology set up cameras in the woods behind their house and a PI in a trailer park outfit, like a just a hundred, yeah, a hundred yards away because it was a remote location they decided to file a lawsuit. Uh, and this is important because, um, oh, I missed a photo. Oh. Look, get that one of Marty with Christy because this is our wedding. And yep. Marty gave Christy away because Christy... There's, there's a lot more to this this part, Mike, if you want me to yeah. throw I mean, the, the relationship that I had with Marty, so on a personal level, when I, like I said in the beginning, when I was leaving, Marty was my friend. He was like a friendly fatherly type figure for me. I lost my family. Marty was with me through that entire thing, like helping me decide what to do. Like what, like I went and stayed at his house. I stayed with him and Mosey. They took me in. They, I had almost no friends. I had no family. I was me and Shane, a two-year-old by myself, and then I was, you know, then I went through a divorce and throughout all of that time period, Marty and Mosey were there for me. They were my closest, probably my closest friends. And he was a really, you know, good friend of mine, a really important person in my life at that time. And yes, we asked him to be the um, minister. We asked him to be the minister and he didn't want to do that. But so then I said, will you walk me down the aisle? And he did. And that was actually towards the very end of our friendship was that was kind of the last, I think the last time I even saw him was that time period. And so anyway, so there was a lot of personal friendship between me and Marty and Mosey that I had with them. And it, I met Marty before I met Mike. So, you know, that was a very strong friendship. And then right. also, I don't want to, I want to make sure we don't forget it, but wasn't going clear in there somewhere as well, or did that happen I think that happened before the wedding, going the going clear. I don't movie, remember right? when glow, going clear happened in the scheme of all that. I thought it was maybe 2017 or yeah. 16. Okay. But either way, he was in, yeah. was wasn't Marty involved in the going clear film and some of the stuff mm -hmm. that was done with that. I remember, Mike? You remember? I don't, you were. I, I don't, don't remember. So. If, I think he was in going clear, yeah. but I don't totally remember. Yeah, but. But, but, then, <laughs> but, but, but then, but then after Going but, Clear, we did but, Louis Thoreau's movie. Right. Yeah. But even at Going Clear, by the time it came out, he was already going a little like, I'm not going to go do promo for it. Yeah. He wasn't there at the premiere. Yeah. He was, he was like, you know, the, these, whatever. I, I'm but, about to, we're, we're about to sort of get into okay. now what happened because. I write about this in my book because the the mystery of Mahdi has baffled a lot of people. It baffled me. It continues to baffle me in, in many respects, and I'll explain why. But um, the lawsuit was filed 
because at the time, Mosi and Mahdi were trying to adopt a child. Yeah. And they were very, very worried that Scientology would mess with them being able to do and carry out the adoption, that they would come up with complaints, that they would say that they were, you know, whatever they would do, that they would mess with it. And when um, they discovered the cameras in the trees behind the house, they freaked out because the they knew who the mother of the the kid that they were adopting was mm -hmm. and that mother and the father of the kid had come to their house she was a young girl and they had come to their house to meet marty and mosey and now they freaked out because they were camped they found these cameras and they were worried that scientology would now be able to identify these people and mess it up entirely yep, yep. and so the lawsuit got filed in a hurry by Ray, and he got a temporary restraining order against Scientology and David Miscavige and Religious Technology Center and the private investigators to prevent them from doing anything against Monique and Marty. And it kind of and shut everything down. It did shut everything down. And that turned into an incredible battle uh, that Mosey, who was the plaintiff in the case, with the assistance of Ray and the other lawyers who were working with him, was were trumping Scientology. I like mean, they were going to win. They, they were, were gonna getting get... their asses handed to them, yeah. left, right, and center. It was in a little courthouse in New Brunfels. And uh, Mike, you were so involved. Mike was <laughs> flying back and forth. Mike was spending hours and hours and hours of his free time. I mean, these are our friends. These are our closest friends. Mike is invested with every ounce of his soul to help fight this lawsuit and to help Marty and Mosey win. Like when Mike does these kind of things, he gives it everything. If you're Mike's friend and he's hel helping you on your lawsuit, you're good. Mike is amazing and he will be there. And that's what he did. He was there for them every step of the way. I just have to say that, Mike, because you you put so much into that. You worked so hard on that lawsuit to help them. Yeah, I, I yes, I did. I mean, I was basically the contact point for rounding up witnesses and affidavits from people supporting the statements that had been made by Marty and Mosey in, or Mosey in the lawsuit and um, helping, you know, navigate helping the lawyers navigate their way through the the crazy policies and way Scientology approaches litigation in any event it was a long um a long battle that was going exceedingly well I mean they and were that's they, when we sh and that's when we were shooting the Louis Thoreau thing my exactly. Scientology movie yeah. Exactly. And you, if you watch that, if you want to get an, an essence of where Marty was at during that time, if you watched Louis Thoreau, my Scientology movie, he's unhinged in the movie because yeah. he was basically being harassed and they were, and the kid, the, the, the way we heard it or the way I was told is they were still trying to figure out how to make it so they couldn't adopt that kid all the way up until that movie came out. And then when that movie came out, Marty had already flip flopped to the other side and said, this was all a joke and I don't, I don't support this. And he was basically um, denying everything he said in the film that they right. had shot. <laughs> yeah. And, and a few months before that, I had flown to San Antonio, Texas and shot with Marty for investigation discovery. They asked me to participate because I was Marty's direct junior. Um, and even at that time, that was like June approximately. And, and the Louis Thoreau movie was, I think, October. But even then, he was very standoffish and a little strange. And really, the only thing we connected on was his adopted son. And because my youngest son was not that not that much of a difference in age. So we kind of were like, oh yeah, but it was very tense and unusual. And, you know, obviously by that point I'd known and worked with Barty for many years. 
So it just felt off. You had, <laughs> with, and Mike, you had an, a visit with him too once. Right. He actually I, had I went to one Austin. Final. I went to Austin and I called him and I said, hey, I'm in Austin. I'll drive down to San Antonio and see you and, and Mosey because they were living in a house in San Antonio at that time. Yeah. Um, and he was like, ah, well, you know, I don't know. And I, he didn't exactly know how to say no. Yeah. And so because I was very insistent. Hey, man, I'm 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 I'm, not, you know, 100 miles away. I'm going to come down and see you. Yeah. And. I arrive at the house and it was like he like I knocked on the door and it was like this long delay. And then he eventually came and opened the door. Hi, come in, not the usual greeting. And then sort of, I sort of sat and small talked about the weather and about their son and which, whereas, is, not, which is not something that we do. Yeah. <laughs> no. and, and, and whereas the, the the like however many months before that for new year's eve we went to their house and stayed at their house with both of our children yep. and were their guests and were there for their big new year's eve party and that was when they were still doing the lawsuit and ray was there and all the friends were there and it was a big celebration and it was fun and happy and we took lots of amazing pictures so we were it was like family yep so when um suddenly one day out of the blue, there was an announcement that Monique Rathbun had dismissed her lawsuit. Like it was like literally what? Yeah. yeah. yeah like, when, they were, when they were slaying it and going to win. Yeah. Uh, yes. What? 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 And I called up Ray and it was like, I don't, you know, they didn't talk to us. They didn't consult with us. We have no idea what's going on. This is Ma Ray. You know, Ray Jeffrey, yes. the lawyer. Yeah, he's saying the lawyer. And he's saying, I, I don't know what I'm like. This Mike, is let me them. enter in one more thing before this. So Marty and Mosey were also having talks with someone. We don't know who or what. He didn't even tell us, but he called right. us up before this, before this lawsuit um dismissal announcement he called us and he had a phone call with me and mike and he and mosey was there in the background like it was between marty and mike talking but me and mosey were there for the conversation and he basically said something like which sort of implied there was talks there was things or like they or were even, negotiating a deal he, he didn't even say that he just said let's say there was something like that it was kind of an implication of if something like that was to happen Mosey and I have talked and we just want you to know, Mike and Christy, that no matter what happens, no matter what, you know, um, discussions, negotiations could potentially could happen with this lawsuit, we will not abandon you, Mike and Christy. We will not, you know, walk away from you. No, Because sometimes the church will try to gag you or tell you you have to disconnect from your friends. Here's your money all that. And they said, you know, if we do any of those things, we may or may not do them. Right. But we will not abandon Mike and Christy. And this was said to me and Mike with like pure, you could feel the like, okay, good. We're, you're, you're part of our team. We're family. We're, we were family. That's how it felt. And yeah. then, and then, so it was a complete. Well, let me show you one other thing too, because this was in our lawsuit when we ended up um, losing our lawsuit when it got dismissed on, um, and we basically had to pay these legal fees. Scientology sent us a letter saying, you won't have to pay the 45,000 if you become a spy, if you turn over the rights to your book, if you give us any contacts, but they only mention one person by name and mm -hmm. that's Marty Rathbun. They say you have to turn over all of their contacts with Marty Rathbun and any others engaged in uh, disparaging CSI and RTC. And when we got this, I called Marty and I said, Marty, I got this letter. And he was like, well, 
you know, if you have to do, you have to do what you have to do. And I said, no, dude, I don't have to do anything. I'm going to write him a check. I'm not turning over anything. Yeah. We were <laughs> and, like, no way. I, oh, and yeah. in no circumstances yeah. Yeah. I said, are we going to spy a deal. for them? Are you yeah. freaking kidding me? And also oh, I don't want God. their blood money. I, I was right. sort of like, you know, I get it. If you have to settle, you have to settle, but I don't have to settle. It's 45K. I could come up with 45K if I have to. Not that and it wasn't so, hard, but we'll yeah. do whatever we have to do. We're not co we're not going to cooperate with terrorists. Right. <laughs> anyway, so we yeah, both well, the <laughs> we both sort of had this enough of a relationship with Marty that we're like, yeah. we're loyal. We're not we're, we're not going to throw anybody yeah, no, under he the was bus literally as like part that. of this as part of this situation that we're in. We will fight to the end. And we won't take a payout. We won't That's be right. compromised. And I don't even care about the payout. Take the payout. Some people do take the payout, whatever, do that, that, that bullshit. Don't abandon your friends because there are people who have decided to settle and who have like, I'm done with this fight. He went through hell. He, they, they harassed the shit out of Marty. I, I wouldn't even like be upset with him if he decided to quietly walk off into the sunset and take the money and just be quiet, but don't backstab your friends. Don't actually speak poorly about Mike Rinder after the fact. No, you do not have, that is not okay. Like that, yeah. we are here for you. We were there. It's it. I mean, the relationship with them was as close as it is with you guys. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, like yeah. I said, I was at their house for new year's Eve. Like that's so, you know, it was such a, such a tight relationship. And for them to then flip, it, it was, it hurt. It, that's, that's what it felt like more than yeah. anything. It was a painful hurt. Yeah. So, and, and the sad part at the end of the day is really who was destroyed in this mess is Marty. Exactly. Right. We were talking about that that's earlier today. Claire. Yeah. Like uh, for those who don't know what then subsequently happened was uh, they, they withdrew the case or they dismissed the case uh, they bought a new house and Mosey started a baking company or baking cake baking business. And Marty, they of, call it a bakery. Yeah. Cake baking <laughs> business. <laughs> There's Do a they, word honey? for it. It's exactly it's a, what it's, it's called. A cake, it's a cake baking business. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love the therapy of laughter. Can I just say that? <laughs> yeah. We call that a bakery here in America. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. The, the lawyers got um, completely iced out. They didn't get anything, uh, even though they had spent uh, years working on this case and had taken it further than anybody has ever taken this sort of litigation against Scientology and have been more successful. They got zip, zero, nada, nothing. And then... Marty started doing these crazy brown jacket videos and they were shot by gold. Clearly uh, they were, uh, you know, these scripted look like the POW videos that they have everybody else do, you know, all our family members and, you know, people that used to work in the Sea Org that come in and say that Mark licked crackers and they're That's the right. same sort of setup videos. And Marty started, reinventing history and claiming that, you know, Leah Remini had offered him huge amounts of money to do the aftermath show and that he, you know, he had, he wouldn't do such a thing. He had rejected all ideas like that. And, you know, the people are doing this sort of stuff and Mike Rinder's a liar and Mark Headley and Tom DeVocht and everybody we're all now suddenly bad. But but yeah. here's, I got to say, this is the most bizarre part of, or to me was one of the most bizarre parts of this, is that these were on his blog. <laughs> they were putting, he was putting these videos up on his blog. But the posts that we showed you before were still on the blog. So you have him yeah. saying everything is white and everything is white. And this is why it is. And even though David Miscavige says it's black, we know that it's white. And now he's coming back on the same exact blog where these other things are saying and goes, you guys know everything's black. These guys are saying it's white. David Miscavige has always been true about, and you're just like, 
dude, you still have the other stuff up. And the <laughs> fact that you downloaded these things of uh, that for, of it, it, you at each other's weddings and it's yeah. still on the blog. You're just like, how? And so we all assumed, I get it. He can't take down the bad stuff because then that's going to give everybody cause and maybe the lawyers will have a little bit more to bite into to get the, you know, you guys made a deal and you left us out of the deal and all this stuff. But to this day, um, these all of the good things that he said about us and all of the things that are the truth are up there. But now all of these new things that are obviously lies that he was exactly the polar opposite on the stance before. All of these things are in the exact same block. Yeah, and, what, and what's so hilarious about this is Scientology then started citing Marty Rathbun as the source of valid information about me or about Leah or about Mark or Christy or whoever. And nobody like, listens. And, nobody but they, listens to and Marty they, Rathbun. And they it, still he's... operate the Rotten Rat website where <laughs> right. they tell everybody that Marty's a liar and that all the abuse came from Marty. And so both Scientology and Marty have both stories up on both of their websites. And that's what, to me, is what is so, kind of like upsetting about it is like, you didn't have to do that, Marty. You could have made some other agreement. You didn't have to agree to, to flip flop and talk shit about all your friends and, you know, betray all your friends because it was useless. Nobody is going <laughs> to listen. Nobody, nobody changed their mind because of the new content Marty Rathbun put out. Nobody decided, oh, well, now that Marty's saying this, I'll go back to the church. Or Mike and Mark and Claire and Christy are really bad, actually. Nobody listens to a word of it. It's all useless. So it doesn't make any sense. Like you could have made a better group. Oh, we lost you, Christy. You oh, there you go. Anyway, can you still hear me? Yeah, yes, we yeah, can. You, you, you just, just got so excited that the mic was just like, I can't. I can't. <laughs> anyway, overload. I Input just overload. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense to me. It's just a completely ridiculous, pointless thing that he didn't need to do. And in yeah. the end, I think that was definitely um, part of Scientology's plan, is that we're yeah. just going to make his opinion useless because he said – both sides he's played both sides of this game so now you don't know what side he, is the real side right and yeah. and he ends up looking like a complete moron yeah. i mean yeah. it's it's sort of sad in a way that very he, sad he both betrayed his friends and ended up looking like a complete idiot yeah and he looks like a double agent yeah, and maybe, everybody and, knows. And truly, yeah. maybe he just doesn't care. And and if that's how he feels about it, uh, great. But I, well, it's just, it's not. He he clearly does care somewhat. And that's why, that's what prompted actually us to do this tonight was because he, the only thing that we have seen from Marty for some time is his brown jacket videos. Yeah. That's been it. Uh, and oh, he wrote a review of my book saying it was all egocentric, self centered, blah, blah, whatever. I didn't even remember. I, I read it and I was like, oh, okay. Uh, it's kind of typical. I mean, one thing about Marty is he writes in a very, very obtuse manner. He does. His, that, that is, that's putting it mildly, honey. Yeah, that's his, gentle. His, gentle his, words, Mike. Good job. <laughs> His his he writing pontificates. is well. He's uh, he's writing about um, historical um, things that happened and somehow correlating them to Scientology, and then quoting Nas. And you're just like, <laughs> yeah. What are you? Did you just quote a rapper as part of your I article? Mean, if it was, and you're just if like, was... what is Marty? What is going on over at Marty's house that he's listening to Nas and being inspired to write historical uh, articles about Scientology? Right. He, in any event, so it's confusing. He just yeah. confuses <laughs> the shit the out least. of you. You try he, to read it, and it's just confusing. Yeah. Is, you go, what's what's the point of writing? Is yeah. it to leave? somebody confused or is it right. to communicate yeah. something to somebody and, and not all of his writing was like that in the beginning some of it was right. really amazing and it was like wow this is so good and it just when kinda... when when Marty writes about here is what happened it's pretty clear when yeah. Marty writes about here is what i think about what happened, happened. it yeah. gets yeah. really confusing like yep 
it, like impossible to follow usually. So recently I got sent a, a, a screen cap from someone who was on LinkedIn and uh, Mark, pull that one up because I can't do it. The, the first one there. And, and actually this little thing is from uh, a LinkedIn page that's Mark Rathman, Spiritual Guidance. And actually even has a picture of him in, I think that's one of the brown shirt. No, actually, I think that's an interview. I was going to um, say that was a TV interview. Yeah. Like Anderson Cooper, or the Inch Wives right. or whatever. So, uh, and, you know, San Antonio spiritual guidance. I'm thinking, wow, that's a little weird. <laughs> Marty's offering spiritual guidance at this point. So then another, then he changed his page a bit, his LinkedIn page. And I got sent another one. Spiritual guidance writing consultation and uh a little quote down here blessed are those who have undergone ordeals they have entered into life the gospel of thomas thomas i don't know i guess it's a bible uh, i think it's a thing. um it's a the gospel uh, of thomas it must be it's a part um, of the bible yeah so he is sort of offering himself up for to help people. Um, and that to me is very ironic. Yeah. It's yeah, ironic, just a little <laughs> ironic a that, that someone who has lost his way so terribly and has betrayed so many people yeah. it's sort of all over the map um, is, is thinks he is in a position to be offering spiritual guidance to anybody. Yeah. And then uh, the day before, yes, or just very recently, someone sent me something else. Uh, he apparently has a sub stack now. And is that, this, is that this one? Yes. Yep. This is um, Marty Rathbun at his finest, most uh, obtuse, uh, absurd um, writing uh, about you know, what God is and how he's come to understand God and his experiences. And uh, I'm not going to read it. We'll have it in a link and you'll be able to see it. But it is like crazy talk. This is not, this, this is, this is sort of sad to me. Yeah. Um, and we who have known Marty very <laughs> somebody just told a dog somewhere to shut up. <laughs> we don't know where that came from, but I heard it loud. I'll tell clear. her too. Emmy, shut up, Emmy. Come on, <laughs> take it easy. That must have been Shane. Yeah. And, and it, in any I mean, event, Emmy didn't like the the God article from Marty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not Emmy did not approve. Neither did I, by the way. <laughs> like really? Sorry, wanna... Mike. We interrupted. Go on. No, no. Yeah. I I didn't really have too much to say about it other than it's kind of it's kind of sad he's he's become like a a lonely little hermit sitting in a room somewhere uh writing about things that he thinks are really really important and that the world should know about uh should hear his opinion on these things and i don't know anybody can, you can go read it and see what you think but it's like I was going to say, for those of us who have known Marty closely over a long period of time, he has always had a tinge of insanity. Yeah, I completely like, agree with that. He has always had this sort of slightly you're worried that maybe he's going to go off the deep end. And Right. I, he did, the I, amount of times that I watched him. he did him, every once in a while. Yeah, yeah the amount yes. of times that I watched him in a conference room at the base, granted, so, you know, none of us were in a sane, safe space, but where he would turn purple and just snap pencils and, you know, like, uh, you're just like, wow, unhinged much? I mean, you know, even in that scenario where there was a lot of unhinged things going on still, I, uh, you know, but nonetheless, I don't wish bad for him. And no. I and I feel sorry for, for the misery he's brought on himself, frankly. Yes, yeah. absolutely correct. And 
I, it's just, yeah, it's just sad. I, it's heartbreaking. I have assumed that his motivation for, and Mosey's motivation for um, dismissing their lawsuit was in order to, I, I can just imagine the conversation <laughs> that went down. Uh, if I was presenting this from the Scientology side, trying to, to reach some sort of a deal with Marty Rathbun, I would be saying to him, Marty, you're, you know, 69 or 74 or however many years old you have uh, a six-year-old or a seven-year-old son you have always been concerned about his future and being able to provide for him you have nothing you have no money you don't have a house you don't have anything uh what if you drop dead tomorrow what's going to happen to your son and to mosey and I believe that that would be uh, the go button for Marty yeah, and yeah. that he would take that over and above anything else and yeah. protect his son and protect his wife uh, at whatever and screw whatever the consequences were. Right. And yeah. That's but he why could have still I, done that without screwing the consequences. Well, I, I yeah, understand, but that's that's where yeah, the you're right. he craziness comes he in. Yeah, you're right. He could have he could have protected his wife and protected his son and gone off peacefully and quietly and never spoken a word again and not stabbed us in the heart. He could have done right. it that way. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, though he, though as we all discussed earlier, they pushed Marty Scientology pushed Marty to the breaking point. And that was very clear to all of us when we watched the Louis Thoreau documentary that he was pushed to the point of being unhinged, not to mention the fact that because of the extensive harassment of Marty that Scientology carefully executed, they had plenty of documentation. Like, remember, didn't he get arrested on his wedding night in New Orleans and they honey, had his well, mug shot? Honey was in the honeymoon. Oh, right, yes. right, right, right. Oh, yeah. yeah, they did everything they could do. Well, he assaulted a police officer, except the police officer was a horse. So Oops. he punched a horse on Bourbon Street. And um, I don't support any abuse of yeah. horses. That's yeah, neither not do I. And neither do the Nor <laughs> New Orleans Police Department either. No. So, uh, understandably, they understandably. I'm just saying that Scientology no, had plenty of fodder in their bin to use on Marty. They, yeah. yeah. I mean, f for sure, at the end of the day, we can definitely put the majority of the blame on Scientology, David Miscavige and L. Ron Hubbard for Marty's current stat. Yes. Well, let's, you know, let's, let's, not forget. But let's not forget he's also he's also a person that could have yes. made a better yeah. choice but let's he not is. forget scientology and david miscavige in particular knew yes all of marty's right e e uh, his, his, his whole life his problems his idiosyncrasies. His buttons, his idiosyncrasies. Yes, they absolutely. knew everything so they absolutely. played it exactly how they should have played it to drive him to do Crazy. what he did Yes, right. Absolutely. Yep. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yes, yep. that's exactly right. Before they we get too Marty much further, right where they wanted him. They the did. Gospel of Thomas is an extra canonical sayings gospel. It was discovered near Nag Hammadi, Egypt, in December 1940, and it's 114 sayings of Jesus. So, and Amy okay. Scobie says that quote Thomas is not from the Bible. Yes, we yes, stand well, corrected. I, I'm just saying. I, I want to correct my part of the Bible to be nonsense on the Bible. Hey, what do <laughs> no I know? I grew up in a cult. <laughs> we don't know anything about anything regarding that kind of no. stuff. It was we grew not up a Bible a thumping cult we grew up in. So uh, I, we didn't... I did play oh, Angel oh, Gabriel oh, when oh. I was eight years old, but that's about the most I know. <laughs> I can <laughs> say the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, actually. Now that I, I think learned about that in school, I did too. Okay, so do you want to do a, a few quick things and then I have one other blog. There? I have a blog post. I'm just going to put it up because I don't know. Oh, do. oh, oh we did that. that. Oh, we yeah, that, that, that was one. us. I can't. This screen is so tiny on my. I know. Here. <laughs> I, I, um, I just want to say one other thing, which is, goes along with what Claire said. And it, I mean, truly, I don't wish Marty any ill will. I don't. And I don't think any of us do. We I wish him peace and happiness and joy with his wife and his child because he did a lot of really good things, too. Um, you know, and I, again, we're hurt. I was hurt by his betrayal, but I, I don't, you know, he, he was a good friend. He really was for me and Mike, we were very close with Marty and Mosey. So yeah. I want him to, I want him to be happy and be at peace. And, you know, I don't think he is, but I, I hope that he will be at some point. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The, the one thing that Scientology always tries to do is they, 
they cannot have connections. So if, if SPs are talking to other SPs, they will do everything they can to try and disconnect them from each other. Even if they're not connected to Scientologists, they don't even want them to be connected to each other because that's how they can sort of collaborate and do, you know, what they're doing. And when Scientology um, goes after one of these people, this is the kind of stuff that they do in the, we don't talk, we don't usually talk about this stuff on the channel because we're not trying to bring attention to what's being done to us. We're trying to expose what Scientology is doing. So when Scientology, th and they've been doing this since the early days of the internet where they they, they get trolls and they get plants and they get them to infiltrate the group. And then the, what they do is they start to cause infighting and they spread rumors yeah. and they, in Scientology, they have a thing called the third party law or the third party rule. And if there is a quarrel, there is always a third individual who said something to either one or both of these people uh, kind of gave them a little bit of gossip or lied to each of them about that the other one said and they create conflict intentionally and so yeah and scientology flips that around like oh this is how you discover if there's a conflict this is how you do it well they turn it around the other way and they go this is how to create conflict they and created so it. so whenever whenever i'm trying to be very um I'm being, be very, choose my words. When, whenever um, there's drama within the Scientology exposed kind of community and SPTV, or whether it's on the internet or if it's on YouTube or on Facebook, Scientology is always there trying to stir the pot and trying yeah. to cause trouble. And we try to as best as we can ignore the drama because it's just a distraction it's meant as a distraction for us and it's meant to divide and put everybody onto one side and that sort of thing but the one thing it tells us is when there is high drama and it's going on like this that we're doing something right because right. scientology yep. are going nuts trying to stop us so if you i know youtube is sort of the the way the YouTube works is some channels like the drama because it creates yeah, more yeah, viewers yeah, and it creates yeah. more subscribers. And so YouTube channels sort of, it just channels about comedy and, and comedians. I watch right. these things and I see the drama. We don't, we try not to embrace the drama because that's not the goal. Yeah. It's like we're at a game and we're on the field playing the game and some dude just took a dump on someone's car out in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, that has nothing to do with what we're doing here. Just because yeah. Scientology is taking dumps out in the parking lot, we're not going to cover that because we don't care about that. We're trying to expose <laughs> them and play the game right here in front of us. So yes. if you are wondering why we don't talk about those things, whenever they come, this has been going on for 20, we've been doing this since 2006, Claire and I, we've seen this a hundred times in a hundred different uh, variations. And um, so we're sort of numb to it, but some of maybe some of these I new wouldn't creators. I would say we're numb to it. Well, but either way, some <laughs> of these new creators that are coming in like, oh, I'm going to tell my story. And then you're like, whoa, I wasn't Just... expecting this. You're like, yeah, this is this is for realsies. We play yeah. for keeps on this in this game. And, yes. um, and, the, and the last thing I wanted to say was the people that sometimes the people that cave, they don't, they didn't sign up for their entire personal yeah. life to be aired out on the internet and become all this thing. Well, unfortunately, when we left, that was step one of Scientology is to try to p b cancel us on the internet and cancel us in yeah, very, the eyes very of Scientology. Yeah, very first thing they did was destroy any possibility we ever had of speaking to our family yeah. mothers, brothers, sisters yeah. ever again. That so was we, just flushed down the toilet. So yes. Yeah, so that was taken off the table right off the bat for us. Yeah. So we, we're kind of like at the point where like, we ain't got nothing less to, left to lose, but some other, some people aren't like that. So if you see people come and go, um, and, and, and kind of disappear from the scene, they might have gotten in a little over their head to what they thought this was going to be like. Yeah. And so, and, and I don't want to, I don't want to, um, I don't want to, um, I don't want to put those people down for deciding to bow out Definitely because no. that's their choice. That, that, yeah. that nobody that's what has I said to about Marty. Any, yeah, nobody yeah. has to do You can walk away if you want. Yeah. yeah. 
Nobody has have, to do this. Yeah, and there have not, been people that walked away and, and walked away and just quietly did their thing, which is a little different than what Marty did. And, and, but yeah, but you're so, right. It's very different, <laughs> you know, very it, different, but you know, each person has to walk their path and we're not, we're, it's not any of our roles nor our intention no. to judge anybody for their choices because yeah. the fact of the matter is that any day of the week, exposing a billion dollar cult is not for the faint of heart. And, and Marty Rathbun, for all the bad, did so much good, like yeah. on this side, on our side. He really yes. did change a lot. Yes. And that stuff I'm still grateful for. Yep. yep. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Find Let's love, not go. hate. Yeah. Yes. Well said, comments. Christy. I love you. I love you too, Claire. <laughs> <sighs> love fest. Oh, here. my God. My. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, before I'm, uh, I'm going to hide this. Love one. Everybody wait, too. wait, 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 Mark. <laughs> before we go, yeah. we have to. Did you copy? I did. Rush. That's that's exactly what I'm saying. I'm going to do yes. before we do that. We have some follow up. From we had time. a live stream yesterday, <laughs> and right before the stream, a, um, some comments popped up, and we we had already ended the stream by the time they showed up on our end. And guess what? I'm going to show them. So this is one. It says it was from Mrs. T. Roosh. Is, is it Rush? I Rush. think it's Rush. Rush. We, we all think it's Rush. No, I asked about little man syndrome and corrected the pronunciation of my name. Did anyone do a deep dive on Dave's Napoleon complex? I don't think anybody's done a deep dive, um, but I do know, um, I did find out recently that Napoleon was taller than David Miscavige. <laughs> so, I mean, that's got to be, that's got to have something to do with something. Um, okay, the next one is I went to William and Mary. Oh, this is the person. Um, I can't read it because it's got the forward on it, but I went to Williams oh. and Mary. So you loved Williamsburg. Mike, still celebrating the good news about your health. God bless you and you both. Okay, good. Nice. Um, Thank you, did, Christy Lee Wilson. Did Rosemary have to pay the credit card debt that Osa charged to her account? She did, right? She, did. Yep, she paid she off all those cards. Yeah, she yep. paid them all off. Yeah, yep. so they stole the money and then she paid off the cards. Yep. And, and then, then they paid her back. And then they direct deposited having... all that money back into her account before um, the uh, feds could bust down their door. Eight points of our, out our factor. Having an Aussie as a BFF, you should know better. Temperature and UV rays don't have a relationship. Yeah, that you was know, for you about the yeah. fishing. Because look at your a... bright, shiny forehead in that picture, honey. I know. Oh, it was really... Something I ever got was skiing in Colorado. That's true. I remember <laughs> oh. uh, you saying that when you... <laughs> but, you know, but today I look a million times better. It was really... I mean, I just got off the river you were and hot came too. and did the you light. You were still yeah. overheated. Can, yeah. can I just say my favorite moment of yesterday was when Mark called bighorn sheep bullhorn <laughs> sheep? <laughs> It was amazing. Yeah, that I'm was glad you were amused. I'm glad <laughs> you were so amused. Funny. My brain was on overdrive, okay? <laughs> Overtime overdrive. Okay, so we did show your super chats from yesterday. And, and she just Mrs. commented that she it's Rush. Rush. It's Rush. Rush. See, R we do that. S -H. I yes. saw that yesterday. I know. R I just, period U There's period some words I just always want to say a certain way. It and doesn't matter how many times it. I'm telling um, okay, here now to start off today, Mrs. T. Rush. Rush. I would be wrong, but I've always thought Marty is a sociopath. He enjoys being the enforcer. What do you think? Yep. He did not like it. I'll tell you that. He didn't <laughs> seem to not like it. <laughs> yeah, I would I agree. agree with that. Hey, by um, the way, folks, segue. I thought of a, a new name for this show right here. You oh, ready? yeah. Um, MC Squared. Get it? <laughs> Yeah, MC, and MC and MNC. And Mark. And I know. I Claire thought of it the other Christy. day, but I wasn't going to tell anybody oh, because it's so good. my brain so good. recovered and was like, yeah, don't say those words out loud. <laughs> so um, good. That's okay. a good one, Claire. Good job. <laughs> Thank Dastardly you. Dastardly Saboteur, was he ever assigned to the RPF? No. I don't think so. No, no, Marty? he was not. Are we talking Never? about Marty? It, Marty yeah. But even in Marty. the 70s and all that stuff? Nope. No. Never. You know, Matt, um, you know, another person who knows a lot about uh, Marty is Matt. Um, Pesh, Pesh, yep. because he and Marty uh, joined the Sea Org at the, the same time back in the seventies. 
Right. Yes. In Los and I think Matt was the first person that Marty reached out to. Yes, I, I saw Amy it. Scobie commented about that. Amy, oh. and, the... Amy and Matt helped to get Marty to actually start speaking out. They right. were yeah. the ones. They went there and started talking to him about the disconnection. And then he got really upset. He was all quiet, not doing anything. And he got all worked up and was like, I got to do something. And yeah, so. Yeah. All of us, you know, you guys think this happened by accident. All of the people that you see, you know, Matt and Amy and Mike, we, we've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Before yeah. before we were on YouTube, we were still doing this, just not, oh, yeah. uh, not with, uh, you know, 2,000 people watching live. Um, Noel Goldberg <laughs> watched video update on Mike's health. Who knew that the best possible news would be that Mike is a mutant who has lost his inner glow? LOL. <laughs> Mike is a mutant. Um, Ooh, I tell like you, that. B BTs activate, baby. BTs activate. Okay. Boom. We need like um, a teenage mutant ninja turtle name for you now, Mike. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Mike the mutant. <laughs> like oh, Scientology is going to do. They got a website cooking up right now. Yeah, they no, got. We'll just call you Magic Mike. <laughs> a suppressive pup says. Question: Was there ever any writings from LRH about dealing with people with violence? Oh, absolutely. There is a there is a pretty uh, famous, infamous advice, which is a Hubbard writing that was never published as a policy letter, but is to be treated the same way to David Miscavige about uh, down dog and every now and then you have to beat people in order to get them to be obedient and teach them a lesson. Yeah. Miscavige used that routinely to justify what he did. Wow. Yeah, and, and when somebody might say like, if he would see somebody like going like, oh, I don't know about that. He'd be like, hey, listen, LRH said you got to do this. This is the way, this is why. I'm not doing this because I'm a meanie. I'm doing this because Hubbard said you got to do it every once in a while. And you then there keep... was a flag order too about uh, when the ship's about to hit the rocks, it's okay for officers to yell. It doesn't talk about physical violence, but it talks about yelling well, and screaming. Well, there is knowledge a report the knowledge says, report no. says take the person in a, in a dark alley and do whatever you got to do yeah if you okay. come out when he's a got a black guy, guy yeah. yeah then right. you you and know everybody so there's knows a, so there there's even another, in addition go ahead there's another flag order that says that um sea org members coming uh to um physical alter right. alter altercation is not actionable other than if it prevents someone uh, damages someone so they can't do their job right yeah yeah, so you could rough somebody up as long as they can work, we're good. Yep. So that's numerous policies right there. There you go. Yeah. Um, Mark Fisher. Hundreds, Mark Fisher's Las Vegas travel and more. <laughs> He's got a new blog. Nice. A new uh, YouTube channel, I'm sorry. Okay, he said a oh. word here. I'm just going to read the gang, and then it rhymes with gang, but it starts with a B. Sec checks were started by DM at ASI completely. So just started by David Miscavige at Author Services Incorporated. Right. Is that completely word, crazy. a word we're not allowed to say on YouTube? I'm, 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 I'm going to err on the side of not, you know, <laughs> okay. because, just, you know, we're not doing a video rules, about that. So. And if you... Okay. But that was a term used yeah. in the Sea Org. If yep. there are multiple people interrogating you, that's what it was called within the Sea Organization. In and it fact, was a known thing. I think that, and then that got, I, I, I'm not sure, Mark, whether that began before or after, but the, the first uh, w widespread implementation of that particular technique was at the San Francisco Mission Holders Convention. Yes. Yeah, where they just lined them up. Yep, and mm -hmm. it was, yeah, two, yeah. three, four people at once. And that was definitely, I'm going to say without a doubt, that was during Miscavige's era, not during Hubbard's era. That was a yeah. Miscavige-esque or the people that were working with him at the time kind of thing. Well, don't get, too, don't get too certain about that because that transcript of that whole thing was sent to Hubbard. And well, no, but he, I'm but I'm saying he wasn't the one. Hubbard, I didn't, I don't know of any instances of Hubbard partaking in that. that yeah. Was, okay. Yeah. Okay. But he, I don't he, not, not that he didn't me, know about. We're it. We're not defending Hubbard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come on, Mark. Yeah. You know what? I was thinking <laughs> the other think night. Your BTs have gotten a little one. No. Listen to like, me. 
if your name was if your nickname when you were a kid was Laffy, you might have been a little bit unhinged too. <laughs> Hubbard's first name, everybody calls him L. Ron Hubbard. His first name is Lafayette. Okay. If there are any bullies around when he was a kid, they were on duty for that. There was. I'm and telling. he jumped on them from a 10 foot fence. Yeah. That's and he right. read the policy. I think, yes, I think the there's some stories. Kids, he beat them up. I think there's All some stories about that Colonel Snake Thompson that we don't know about as well. An older military gen gentleman on a that boat like, hanging out with like a little kid. Cats. Yeah, that like to have a cat in his cabin. And L. Ron Hubbard was hanging out with him full time. There's untold stories on this uh, this uh, yep. Hubbard childhood. Okay. Um, thank Lordy you for that, Lord. Mark Fisher. Um, Mitch Brisker. Thank you for being in the chat, Mitch. After he blew, Miscavige was fond of saying Marty's mom received electroshock therapy when Marty was in the womb. Marty and Dave were bottomless pits of evil. Okay. Yep. He said yes. that David Miscavige said that many times before Marty Blue too. Yes, I was that's just the kind of thing, broadly, That's the broadly. kind of thing you don't say. Like you don't tell people that. Like that's Mar if if that's well, true or not true, that's personal information. Right. That's David Miscavige one time told me that my mom was the stupidest Sea Org member that he had ever encountered, and that when he met her on the RPF, he left her on the RPF because she was so stupid that she deserved the RPF for being that stupid, and then didn't know because she had a different last name that that was my mom. Um, Mountain Dew X97. Mike, read your book and was shocked to find out that you were out here in, Buff in the Buffalo area. Have you by chance heard of Ellie Perkins and her uh, passing. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah pretty we sure all everybody have. in Scientology has heard about that one. Yeah. yeah. We um, watched maybe the show, spoke yeah. to spoke to various relatives. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Jeremy Sarah, has Jeremy Perkins has done a number of interviews on right. YouTube. Yeah. Sarah Blodgett, I remember that Marty had a brother who was mentally ill. Do you think some of Marty's actions reflect some mental instability? Well, that's kind of his Marty Rathbun's origin story. Thank you for that, Sarah. Very generous. Yeah. Um, Marty Rathbun's origin story was that he was put in, well, the brother and him were at a bar and there was a fight, a bar fight that Marty was involved in and his brother came to stick up for him and, um, you know, settle it. And his brother was stabbed and passed away. Yeah. Um, in that scenario. And then very shortly after that, in the very uh, early years of Marty's uh, Sea Org career, he was assigned to watch a woman whose husband had threatened to um, end her with a firearm. And, when... and this was at uh, this was at the big blue buildings in Los Angeles in the late 70s. Yeah. And Marty was put in charge of watching that that woman so that she wouldn't be harmed by the husband and the husband showed up at the complex and the husband ended her with just like he said he would. And that was on Marty too. So and Marty, didn't, isn't it true that Marty Rathbun and Ken Hoden both were temporarily arrested when that happened because they were both at the scene of the crime. That's, that's at least what Marty told me. It, that may, I don't know about that Claire, but I know that, he was literally in the line of fire. Yes. Like he, he, w this was not, he wasn't like watching from a hundred no. yards down the street. No. Yeah. And, and this whole thing about Marty's family, his brother, his mother, his mother had all sorts of problems. This, the, the Marty's family history is, is one that you sort of go, Hmm. Okay. Well, if you believe that that one's uh, genes and how the environment in which they were raised affects their the way that they approach life, then you would absolutely conclude that this had a big impact on Marty. Yeah. Yeah. And and again, I don't know any of the facts, but I recall Marty saying that when he was approximately six is when his mother ended herself. So all of that is, you know, always I looked at Marty as a traumatized person mm -hmm. before and not ending with his involvement in Scientology. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, okay, good. And then Jolene Harris. 
Behind the Bastards is a podcast that has comedians on to tell the stories of the worst people in history. Mark should reach out to do a DM episodes. Okay, I'll check it out. Thank you, Joey. Nice. I appreciate that. Or an L. Ron Hubbard. Yeah, yeah there you both. go. The double feature. We could, exactly. <laughs> Miscavige, <laughs> Marty, everybody. Um, yeah. Jay Beans, was it hard to forgive each other for the effed up S? COS made you do to each other. I'm a never in, but a trauma survivor, and that would be near impossible. Fortunately for us, I think for the most part, um, even though Mike is, um, he's sort of um, in, he's written, he writes some of the spy files that I cover in my thing. I was already gone by that part, and I already wrote, wrote I was already, I knew he was up, I knew he was doing that. So it was sort of like, it was like, we, that was his part and that I had my part. So it was sort of like, I'm not going to blame Mike for the part he was there to play. But, um, but when we were there and I think we've covered this before, I don't think um, we real Mike and I, we work together a lot and we were pretty much both like we're doing our job and we're doing our thing and no reason to really be evil to this guy for any particular reason. Cause he doesn't seem to be, you know, a guy that I would do that with, but I wasn't, I mean, anybody who, who was at the end base can comment. I was sort of like, I wasn't there for the politics and all that. I was just trying to get my job done. And I was, just, yeah. however I could do that. If you didn't help me get my job done, I really just didn't have any dealings with you at all. I, I I think that the people who have been through it um, forgive easier than the people who have not. I, think uh, you're I right. generally find that anybody who I had had you know interactions with when I was in the Sea Org or in Scientology, um, they're very 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 forgiving because they look at themselves and they go, yeah, and I did stuff that I'm not proud of either. And I wasn't who I really am. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there are some people who are outside of that circle who seem to constantly bring up, uh, you've why never you talked to this. Why haven't why you, you done talking? this? Why haven't you done that? Why? You're just like, like, where do you come from? How do you, uh, why do you even have a say in any of this? Yes, I know what you're talking about. And that, that was another thing I was thinking about when we were talking about Marty and, and all talking about the fair game stuff that they do to us. We worked with David Miscavige directly for decades. He, the, the fair game stuff they do on the internet is, is, is almost like, uh, just another Sea Org member writing dribble on the internet. So we, we, the, all the horrible things they say about us, those things were said directly to our face for years and years and years. Yeah. So it's sort of like, we've been inoculated. We're, we're not, we're, <laughs> we've had our vaccinations. Yeah. David Miscavige inoculated us before we even <laughs> left. So the fact that they kind of gave, took everything that we had to, you know, lose, they took that away afterwards. It was just like, okay, you've, you, you did this. You right. did this. Um, fatty bath bomb. Okay. Oh, farty bath bomb. Farty um, bath bomb. Oh, well, Michelle Carpenter. That. Hello. I'm not sure if that means something. Maybe that's when you get an FB out of the Sea Org. You get a farty her, bath bomb. It's her nickname for Marty, for Marty Rathbun. Farty oh, bath bomb. Farty oh, that's great. Bath bomb. <laughs> wow. How did I not see that one? Mark. Um, Rosalind C. Is it weird to audit a spouse? Yes, yes. completely. Yes, it is. Marty Terrible. should not have audited Mosey. That is against. Yeah, we're still all here. This is inside <laughs> voice. I inside feel like <laughs> auditing any family member is weird. My mom audited me when I was a child, and it's you just know. weird. You're. It's we like you don't want to be audited by family members it's like having your mom be your therapist no that's yeah. not how it works you don't or yeah. your husband be your therapist that's we don't therapize each other yes <laughs> but especially when there's a romantic element it's yes. actually firmly not forbidden it's supposed to be forbidden so no. it's wrong right. but christy i shared your experience my mom was trying to audit me when i was six yeah and i was like i don't that's want right. auditing i'm fine mm -hmm. And then that's when I learned that if you refuse auditing, that makes you a bad person. Right. And that's one like, of the traits of an, a suppressive person is that they refuse Scientology auditing. That is an yes. actual it's very weird to be audited by your mom. Of a suppressive. I had I had a lot of auditing from my mom. It was weird. It makes your brain and you think all these weird things and you feel all like, oh, is she think it just she know this? What about that? It like you, messes you up ready? your relationship. Are you ready for this, Christy? Yeah, right. We'd like to acknowledge that that was uh, bypassed and that you, it was weird <laughs> being audited by your mother. 
<laughs> Don't make Thanks, it weird, Mark. honey. Don't make it weird. <laughs> a true man of God will ask for forgiveness from the people he has wronged. I know you will give it to him and you will all find peace. Yeah, that's yeah. that's kind of what we're, I mean, that, that's kind of the silly part of this is yeah. we've never, ever talked about this in a video. Right. And and meanwhile, Marty's been doing videos and posts and and we're sort of just like, whatever, it sucks. Yeah. Come on. So finally, now that he's gotten a new job, he's moved on to spiritual guidance. We're like, OK, good. Let's tell let's talk about the other chapter that Marty did. And this is what where we get up to speed. So, and, and so now in perpetuity, anytime anyone asks, what about Marty Rathbun? We can just we're going to refer them to this. Watch the video. Exactly. Project. Because yes. it comes we up. We forgive all Marty. The time. I do not wish Marty ill. Nope. We forgive him. Yeah. It saddens me to see what he's been pushed to. to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, we yeah. missed the friendship. We had a friendship. Yep. He was so, yeah. We wish him the best. Now, yep. Jolene said, Behind the Bastards did a great four parter on LRH. Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah, they've already been there on that one. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. But we could tell, we could do a four parter on Dave. No worries. Uh, rural SD lawyer. Wow. Hey, rural SD lawyer. I haven't seen you in here in a while. Always interesting, always entertaining, always educational. You are doing the greatest public service in the entire world by bringing light to evil. Why, thank you. Wow. That was a very, uh, very kind, very generous. Thank you for that. Rural thank SD you, lawyer. rural SD lawyer. Always great to see you. Um, up. Oh. Mrs. R Mrs. Rush is back. Cults make people do crazy things. It's easy to forgive when you both know the truth because you know the gaslighting that went on. That's yep, exactly that's right. exactly right. That's exactly well put. right. Yes. And that and that's why when people oh sorry is somebody in there who's touching stuff Not hands me. off computers. Um, <laughs> Tamara says so glad to see Mike doing good. Glad to see you all tonight. Thank you for that, thank you Tamara. Tamara. Thank you. Um, I don't now I was mind wiped. I was mind wiped. You had Tamara's uh, comment up. Yeah. Um, oh, here we don't go. Don't forget Tamara. Wow. Mrs. Rush again. Thanks, Mrs. Rush. She's really, <laughs> I'm glad I showed your, your chats from last night now. How many who reach OT3 realize that their whole belief system is based on one of Hubbard's sci-fi stories? Mm, very well, few. Yeah, it's not a lot of people. That's the, the silliest thing when, when you talk about space aliens to Scientologists. They genuinely have no idea what you're talking about. It's literally the internet doesn't know. And it, that's another thing I, I, if you say body thetan, Scientologists goes, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. Cause in Scientology, we just call that a thetan. And so in all the lower levels of Scientology, you hear thetan all the time. And that's your thetan, your, your own thetan. And it's when you get to OT3, you find out about these other guys, these space cooties. But I have explained many times that when you get to OT3 and you read those materials in Hubbard's scra like scrolling handwriting, and if you go, well, this is weird, uh, this is just really weird, the standard response is, well, you don't have to believe it. What does the e-meter say? And if it reads on the e-meter, then it's going to, you, you get the certainty that, well, maybe there's something here and that I don't really understand and that the great man had insights that I didn't have and couldn't possibly have. So there is Which, not a lot of people yeah. that just literally walk away from Scientology when they get exposed to OT3 because that material and the answers to the incredulous looks and thoughts of people as well grooved in. Yep. And, yep. and that indoctrination in regards to what the e-meter says is from the moment you walk in the door with the pinch test yep. and recall the moment of the pinch and you watch the needle fall. And that literally from is reinforced over and over and over and over, probably millions of times by the time you reach that point. Right. Yeah. Yep. April in Amsterdam says, did Mitch make any of the Marty videos? That's a good question. I didn't ask him. Ask him next time. I don't yes. think so, but I don't know for he sure. He might know about him at least. I mean, oh, they well, shot, he, somebody he, shot him. He will know. Uh, you know, uh, Rachel knew. Rachel knew that they were shot by SMP. Oh, she did? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, there you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'd, I never talked she to anybody. She wasn't involved. But... We, 
when we when they came out, we were just like, oh yeah, that's a gold video. Like I was like, I even so recognized one of those props. Lamps. Like <laughs> that lamp was in the background of one. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, I was like, whoever dressed this messed up. This is not supposed to be there. I, um, I just like your BSM label, brown suit Marty. Yeah. <laughs> Kisha says, Brown jacket, Marty. Brown BJM. jacket, Marty. BJM. Yes, right. Kisha says, <laughs> Kish like fish. Oh, yeah, there you go. And so I was going to say Keisha, and I said Kish. So I lucked out on this one. Wonder if Marty left blog up as a slap in the face to COS. Thoughts? I think the blog had to be left up. Otherwise, the lawyers might have come circling uh, pretty good because and he also, left. Yeah. Because and he also left it up. up. Yeah. Leaving it up means that Marty has destroyed himself. He has both sides of the argument. So he has complete, by leaving it up, he is 100% nullified as a player on the chessboard. Right. Oh, oh, but, but there was a second reason. He left it up because he never admitted that he settled with Scientology. Yeah. He has this walked day. this weird line yeah. of, uh, I'm not commenting. I don't, you, you're all speculating, but you don't know what really happened, but never actually denying that he took any money or any money. Right. Uh, no money went to Marty Rathbun. I guarantee you that it was put into a trust for their son and uh, this and uh, that, and it's paid out over X number of years. If there's any money involved, but the way, is, I was going to say the way they do this, it's, it's all time released. So yes, exactly. they say, you're going to get, I'm just using a generic thing. You're going to get $10 million. You're going to get $500,000 for every year for X amount of years, as long as you play your part of the bargain. And if you don't, it all disappears and you don't get that. The second you break the rules, then that's when you we're done. You don't get any more payments and yep. they draw and they've done this with L Ron Hubbard's family. And they, this is a normal thing that Sci yep. Scientology knows how to play this game when it comes to paying people to be quiet right. and keep them under control. Yep. <laughs> Robert Watson says the generic term for auditing your spouse is called divorce. <laughs> Spot on. Yes. Love it. Yes. Love it. Completely. Salty beach girl. Lori says you four are amazing. MC squared BTs activate. Yay. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you for that. Salty beach girl. Lori. Um, do you know how Monique and son are now? Um, we saw Claire and I saw Monique on a baking show on like uh, HGTV oh, yeah. or something. We were watching it. It was like, and next we're going to go to Monique on the uh, team seven. And we're like, yeah. is that Monique baking yeah. a cake on a dessert challenge? I hope they're doing well. I do yeah. too. She, that I little boy was super cute. He I, was. I hope they're he having is. fun. I hope he's doing him. well. Moses I mean, had cancer. You know that. Yeah, no, we no. did hear yes. that from somebody yes. recently. Yes, recently. And oh. I think that she is okay. I think it was breast cancer and I think she is okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh. That's good. I mean, we visited Mosey and Marty in Texas um, in 2012, I want to say. We stayed with them. Our kids yeah. were, I think, four and two. We fished off the we back fished. of their yard in the, yep. in the, we the, pointed the, out to them where all I did the, the videos. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. pointed we, out yeah. to them the houses that had PI cameras. Yeah. That was the we also. Went, that yeah. was also the weirdest thing that I think I ever experienced with Marty is he was this guy, doctor, enforcer, Osa. He knew all how all their things was. And, and he walk, missed it. We walked to the beach and I'm like, Marty, what's going on over here? And he's like, what do you mean? I go, this guy, that's a, that's an Osa a camera house. And he was like, what? And I was like, dude, are you so out of it that you don't even know that that's, that house is set up with cameras. Something. And nothing I'm, happens I, to me. Nobody does it except Only me. Headley okay. is the special, Look. special guy. <laughs> Don't mess with me. Anyway, but, um, but yeah, when I, when that happened, I even, we were, we, we did a road trip and we went, we stopped off at them and I told Claire, I was like, something's wrong with Marty. I don't know how he doesn't know that that house like you could see the camera lens and the yeah. freaking blinds. I was like, dude, you got it. You got to You got to reevaluate what's going on here because you're not playing the game. You got to wake way. up and smell the coffee. Buddy. Yes. Oof. Yes, exactly. Eight points of R factor. Uh, out R factor. Out R factor. I'm an LRH error era. ERA recovering kiddo. He always wrote in infinity eight read on from there. Whoa. Okay. Um, I don't know that what deep. that means. That I think that Marty wrote that. 
You think so? <laughs> I have no idea. Sorry, eight points out our factor. You are dropping too much information in such we were, a small super chat, but we I were, appreciate it. We were it. missing Thanks. the eight another, points of our maybe factor Maybe there's another there. super chat coming from him. Read on. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, we we you're, really In Scientology, you're not supposed to go past a misunderstood word, and I don't know what the eight points of out our factor are, so that sort of blanks out on everything else after that. Dr. X in the house. Quick Boom. clap to Team MC Squared. Rushing off to teach lecture on targeted drug delivery systems for cancer and stroke treatment. Yay. Treating students to cake and... Um, I don't, it looks soda? like a soda. Soda. Oh, soda for the last of the year. Sending you all virtual cake, beer, yeah. wine, cocktails and prep for IES fundraiser. Why? Thank, thank you. you. I don't know. Oh, she she said virtual. She said virtual. I was like, I don't know. Cause this yeah. could go either way. <laughs> well, well, she also sent me, uh, funds to provide two signed books for the IES fundraiser. Oh yes. And amazing. she sent us uh, a whole funds for a whole list of giveaways for the yeah. IAS fundraiser. So we have we'll have some Davy dolls, some bobbleheads, some SP nice. bracelets, Thank all you, kinds Dr. of good X. giveaways. Yes. Um, no, Marty R is running for city council man in Clearwater on Chad's channel. Um, that's a okay. Joke. That's yeah. uh, Clearwater Chad being uh, cheeky. Yeah. Um, Vanessa Winberry. Hi, guys. Fellow SP here. Loving all the SP TV channels I've found and what you all are doing. Mark, I love your book. Mike, yours is in the mail. Can't wait to read yours, Claire. Love all. Thanks for everything you do. Why, thank you, Vanessa. That was very thank substantial you. in terms of like hitting everybody and thank taking it, Vanessa. taking it, all of us. Thank you, us Vanessa. Sarah S. Leah said COS had evidence of him abusing his son before the adoption was finalized. And that's why they were able to get him to do what he did kid okay yeah no i think it was that he there there was a possibility that that could happen because he had been arrested for the punching right. the horse that was what I, scientology was saying that's not yes. what leah said yeah and, i promise yeah. you leah has never said that yeah. yeah so so i think that was that was their um that, that that was their planned and stated attack method and and Mar and they told marty this it wasn't like they were yeah they said you're gonna do this or we're gonna do this and that's and he was like okay we don't know what the this is and the that's were but that's about what we know yep. Yep. um okay amy that quote thomas is not from the bible i know i i'm, yes. I'm sorry I, I'm we, we've been it. educated thank tonight oh, here thank we go you. Matt was the first person Marty reached out to in 2008. We wish him yes. well. There you go. See, that, yep. it, we're not trying. That's another thing. Sometimes people are like, you guys should protest the Scientology. You should do this or you should attack, uh, yell out at the staff. The staff are sort of in the same kind of victim boat as the people that pay money to Scientology. They're all just being used. And when they're done with them, they just throw them away like trash. So we, we want to reach out like these channels and we've been michael attested this as well we're now getting um contacted by family members of sea org members <clears throat> so that they can figure out a very calm and peaceful way to speak with these people so that they can kind of know that there's a place for them to be and stuff like that you, right i think we have to err on the side of compassion um with these people instead of anger and in scientology when someone attacks you um like if that's a suppressive you immediately are supposed to block everything they say yeah so. let me just share an amazing story so at the spshop.com we have <clears throat> um shirts fashioned somewhat after the whole curious promo from scientology where we have curious and on the back we have this amazing sp logo designed by mike brown and a qr code for the foundation website well a woman wore one of these shirts to disney world a few days ago and somebody scanned the qr code and came up to her and asked her and it turned out the person asking the questions has a brother who's been in the C organization for 10 years who is utterly miserable. And so she said, just contact the Aftermath Foundation. So I'm just saying, you never know who yeah. our message is reaching. Yeah. We, we are here for whoever wants to get out of Scientology. We're here to help. And that's an, just an amazing um, indicator to me of the reach that SPTV is having. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Donna Rose says, when might we see the next aftermath story? Well, you know, we help, on. yeah, yes. we help people all the time. Soon. 
and the ones that are are willing to tell their story or have their story told, um, then we'll tell it. And so we are working on um, one of those right now. And yes. as many people that we help that want to tell their story, we'll help also tell the story. But that's not a requirement or a condition of the aftermath helping somebody that they have to tell their story. Right. They can, we can help them. They can get out of Scientology. They can start a new life. And no one will ever know if they don't want them to know. And that, yep. and that's fine with us as well. We don't. We we actually started the aftermath years and years before any of the any of us had we're doing anything like this on YouTube. So yes. it's just right. a, it's just a weird byproduct that's sort of come out of it that people want us, want them, want people to know how they were helped. Yes. Andrea Bear says being an advisor spiritual, isn't that a problem for Scientology? I don't think, I think that's how, whatever he's doing is obviously not part of the deal that they made. So he's sort of doing whatever he can do. Yeah. I think he just misses the community and he misses being able to, uh, to talk to people and help people. And that part of him, um, needs to do that. I, that's what I personally think. He wants to be a guru. Um, Lathanda Grocklinga, uh, sending love to you all. It is horrible to lose a dear friend like that. Such a loss and betrayal hurts no matter how the loss came about. Yep. Thank you yep. for that. Lathanda. That's it. That's very accurate. Oh, yep. Maria de Jesus Catira says Thomas in the Bible, AKA doubting Thomas, who had to stick his fingers into the wound that killed Jesus because he didn't believe Jesus uh, didn't believe Christ after his return after he was crucified significant um yeah i guess um that is why maybe that's why marty picked that as one of the things i don't know um well, I'll, there's I'll a lot of, on that one no, well, not an i'm just going to say that. <laughs> i'm not <laughs> sure why marty was quoting thomas Jeff jefferson and nas in the same article on his blog yeah. either but i'm sure he had some method to his madness yeah <laughs> um mrs t rush it's pronounced rush thanks all Yay. thank you okay figured it out thank you mrs um, t rush Ms. Pillow, if COS is being driven by nut, be, oh, if if COS is being driven, <laughs> driven nuts, by nuts, yeah, well, uh, they both work. That's um, true yeah. too. Nuts <laughs> by SPTV. Let's be honest, that's not a very long drive. Yes, yeah. yes. I, Thank you, Ms. Pillow. I'm sorry. We but we've mentioned this before too. If you're watching this and you're new to all this, there is about 50 channels doing Scientology content right now. I'm I'm pretty sure you could just watch sptv all day every day if you started right now and you might go to the end of the year and not run out of videos i mean you still right. have hundreds and hundreds of hours of video so yeah scientology is not having fun with this whole thing um yep. michelle carpenter eminent trouble source this is a, a request to see mike and christy on a game of werewolves again claire can't apologize for killing you um we played a game <laughs> you want to look at that it's a game we played on um, Kelly Copter's channel. Where it was fun. It was fun. It was like so, a Halloween kind of thing. So, and so you get assigned a role of you're either a citizen. There's two werewolves. There's a medium and a doctor. And nobody, the the werewolves know who they are, um, but nobody else knows who they are. And um, <laughs> knows who the werewolves are. Yeah. Okay. So I called Mitch, Mitch Kate rolled in and he had an anti werewolf light behind him, which he proudly announced. So I, I first said, well, <laughs> well like anyone who shows there's up, there's a video you guys can watch. Light. Otherwise, Claire's just going to tell the entire video. It was <laughs> That's an okay. Hour and a half I'm, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Anyway, Michelle <laughs> killed me at the last round, which meant the werewolves won. Okay. Yes. So it's all good. It was a great experience. Thank you for the invitation. <laughs> yes, it would be very fun. Metalhead, why was LRH or DM sending spies and not simply exteriorized Thetans? Also, if anyone actual powers, he would be well known. That would be a big deal. How can you believe in supernatural stuff? Well, I'm telling you, if you grew, we all, every single one of the people in this video, grew up inside Scientology. So we didn't know anything different. We didn't know what everybody else was being taught because we weren't there so we know what scientologist kids were being taught and even then um i was just working i didn't give a two toots about any of that uh, space aliens or any of that and i didn't even know about it. there was a contractor that asked me you guys are believing about space aliens and i was like dude, what are you talking i literally laughed in his face i was like what are you talking about dude what? i was like one time i don't know any space aliens and i don't think any of the other people that work here are space aliens <laughs> one so time i'm not when sure I was... what you're going on yeah, when I broke my leg and I was getting um, physical therapy out in town in Hemet, one time the physical therapist was like, 
is it true that you guys have machine guns in the golf course? I'm like, not that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> Doris Azevedo, super sticker. Thank you for that, Doris. I appreciate it. Thank you, it. Doris. Um, oh, here we go. Jolene Harris. Zenu is my fur baby showing off the new kitty. Nice. Awesome. There you go. Um, LRH always wrote <laughs> Infinity 8, but, but Infinity, Infinity Sideways. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's that's the true. Logo. That was, that was yeah. the logo. I do that know that. Books 08, 880, yeah. that was a big, that's yeah. a whole story that Jeff Hawkins could tell, but every yes. single Scientology book had a very specific cover, and each one of those covers is one of the pictures that you would get shown by Lord Zeno and his henchmen when you would go to the uh, relearning place to get reprogrammed and um, hypnotized about Christ and the trains and the space people and all this stuff. So every, if you want to know what the pictures are that you got shown, just look on the internet and look at all the different Scientology books. Look covers. at the old covers. The old covers, but the new covers still also have some of that stuff. They have there. a bit, but not as much as the old ones. But the They've old got covers. snakes and guys in, in space helmets and locomotives but, uh, and the guy eating the drumstick, the gorilla eating the drumstick and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. L. Ron Hubbard very, very specifically said exactly what each picture was to be because he knew what the pictures was. They show at the uh, the programming, uh, the machine. At the drive-in, at the Xenu drive-in. <laughs> the at the programming Zenu drive station. <laughs> oh, that's a great merch. Hold on, I'll get right down. The implant, down. <laughs> implant station. Xenu implant station drive-in. Okay. And, and um, like, me and Mark, we didn't do any OT levels in Scientology. So we never heard about any of this stuff nope. until after we left. Like I never heard a single peep about aliens or any of this. I never knew anything. So and if they would have told me, I'm pretty sure I would have came up with the same BTs activate idea because that <laughs> I'm, I'm all so about not, that. The, but the thing is, is not every Scientologist knows about this because they don't get to those levels. And so mm -hmm. when they, so a yeah, majority not, don't. Right. The majority don't. So all the media and the whole wide world that knows about that knows way more than the Scientologists. Right. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Michael Mills, super chat. Thank you for that. Or super sticker, whatever they call it. Um, Amy Scobie said, and my book giveaways too. Yes. We're going to have yes. some Amy Scobie abuse at the top Yay. books to give away as well. Um, we're almost down to the last ones here. And in an effort to Excellent. keep Louis Farrakhan involved with our church, I'm going to add bow ties to the Sea Org uniforms. Well, that's <laughs> a good idea, fit David. Right Miscavige. in with the bellhop. Yeah, that'll Look. work. You know, David Miscavige has been super chatting in every video we're doing these days. So, you know, we may turn this thing around, guys, if he's sending us four ninety nine in the super chat. You and, know, and and he's you know, on the horizon. You know, uh, Dave is very involved with those uniforms. He yes. really is. He does know. I mean, oh my goodness, I'm not. Well, Let's we not can't even go there. Or we can't even start a whole new one. Salty Beach Girl, you have such loving, forgiving hearts. Love you all. Well, thank you. We try. Thank you. you know, we're thank just you, humans. Mari. We screw up sometimes and do silly things, but you know, we try. Brett Grace, while you guys were in COS, did anyone try and get you out? I mm. wish. I used to hope and pray that someone would come pick me up, some long lost family member. I don't Never think happened. anybody tried to get me out. No. My dad my dad did let me know on a regular basis that I ever needed anything. And he also he had a one eight hundred number. And so that I could always call him toll free, no matter where I was wow. or where. And, and it was also kind of, you could call a 1-800 number on the property. Sometimes that was a period where you didn't need a, uh, to get okay. Cause it was no toll and only told calls had to go through reception. So I could actually call him and talk to him on the phone. And then they found out and they were like, yeah, you can't do that no more. Um, but didn't you call that 1-800 number when you escaped? I did. Yeah, because yeah. it's the only number I knew. And I was like, amazing. oh, I know. It's, it's the only yeah. phone number I knew besides my own, uh, you know, Nextel radio phone that I had. And 1-800-I-want-help, the Scientology uh, base <laughs> right. hotline if you need to get. Yeah. Um, DP never in. Um, just searched Behind the Bastards. They did a two series on Hubbard, a three-parter in 2018 and a two-parter in 2019 about his last days. Wow, that really is on the amazing. Ball, guys. Yeah, the Behind the Bastards. We got. I didn't. I've never even heard of this. Thing. Me either. 
That's amazing. Um, okay. Well, we did it, guys. We got to the Yay. end. I'm gonna make I'm just gonna go through here and make sure I didn't miss anybody. Um, and um, let's do while we do that, let's do um oh, we do we showed this yesterday. I wanna I just want to kind of pump up the jam on this. Mark Bunker 2024.com. Mark yes. Bunker is running for Clearwater uh, running for re-election in the Clearwater City Council. And the fact that he is there is Clearwater's only chance to be, get free of Scientology eventually and so we want to make sure that he gets re-elected and you can support that effort by going to markbunker2024.com and um i think um we should talk to we should reach out to uh mark claire and see if he wants to do a video and we could talk about when he edited the jason begay video at my on my editing system at burbank and at my shop yep. and we can go into all kinds of crazy behind the scenes stories perfect sounds um, good and then um, if you haven't subscribed to either of our channels, please, if you're watching on Mike's channel, um, like and subscribe. That would be amazing. And if you're watching on the Blown For Good channel, please like and subscribe. Um, we're not, uh, per YouTube, 80% of the people that watch these videos are not subscribed to these videos. And I don't know Believe what it is. It on, not. It's, is it on your is channel what? like that too, Mike? Yeah. Yeah, 86% not subscribed. I'm not even sure how that works exactly, but either way. For Osa and all you Scientologists out there, we do not share our mailing lists. There's no cost to subscribe. You'll just get notifications. <laughs> from YouTube, There's no not exposure. From us. Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. So don't be scared. Free. You too can subscribe and become more educated and we can yeah. help you get out. I thought you were going to say to Osa and all those who are being forced to watch this as part to of get your job, sock accounts. You can you can reach out to the Aftermath Foundation and we will help you. Yes, yeah, that too. Don't. Yeah, that too. We would love to help you. Please. Yes. And you don't even have to tell by, your story by making us help you escape. That would well, we might nothing as well would put, be more thrilling. <laughs> we might as well put this up because you can support the Aftermath Foundation by going to the aftermathfoundation.org. Um, and um, you can vault, sign up to be a volunteer. You can find out, uh, you can sign up to get on our mailing list. So when new, a new series or a new program comes out on somebody that we've helped, you'll get notified. If we have new merch or new products that support the foundation, you'll know about that. And then also bobbleheads and SP bracelets can be gotten from the spshop.com. And the SP shop, all of the things that we sell in the SP shop are go to support the Aftermath Foundation. So all these things, uh, you know, it's all we, we're trying to make this all work together and make everything make sense. Yes. But um, I think that's good. I think Mark, we did you it. Guys. Are, Mark, you are a scientist. I am not a scientist. <laughs> you are a scientist. Look at what you just did. You put all that stuff up on the screen. You I just are a buttons. scientist. I just clicked some buttons. I mean, come on, don't, let's not pretend that. I did fix your microphone before the stream. I will take credit for that. Um, anyway, you're a scientist. remotely. Um, anyway, thank you, everybody who joined us today. Um, we, Claire and I, are going to do a special video um, uh, coming soon. I'm not exactly sure when, but we are going to tell of the very first person that we broke out of the international headquarters and yes. how we did it and how the whole thing happened blow by blow. No one has ever, um, we've never actually done a video where we tell the entire story of how this happened. And, and nobody um, had ever done that before either folks. Yeah. So it's a good it was story. groundbreaking. Yes. yes. It's a good story. Yes. So, yeah. We're going to uh, keep click your uh, bell notification if you want to find out when that's going to hit the streets. And then otherwise, um, <laughs> yeah, I think we're good. We did it. We got every thank you, everybody who commented. Thank you for everybody who joined. And we always video. go twice as long as we plan to. Exactly. That's OK. That's just because we love Bye, you guys everybody. so, so much. And it's always a pleasure hanging with you. Oh, and you know to the rest of you 2,000 people out there, we love you too. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and somebody was commenting when I put up my end video, there's there just those white boxes there. That's because we're doing this live and I have to put those videos in on YouTube after the video goes live. But because we're doing a live stream, live stream with us we're going to play our special friendly outro and we're and, in our uh, final and, two minutes here folks just oh, as a I, reminder and i do have to duck out because i got to get ready for the next stream with mitch so i'm going to let you guys wrap this one up claire make sure to play the outro um yes. and do all the stuff that i normally do don't be a barbarian thank you bye <laughs> <laughs> have and, i and ever been a barbarian those... oh my gosh come on no folks. you're the least barbarian person i know claire <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> but, it out now. So awesome. See yes. you later, guys. Thanks again for doing this Bye. with us. We appreciate Bye, it. Bye-bye. Yes. And give me a minute here.
Ah, ah, barbarian. So fired. Oh, yeah, barbarian. I'm so fired. Oh my gosh, I'm freaking out here. Ah, 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 ah. Oh my god. The videos gosh. are on the brand. The video brand, should be under brand. No, I'm looking for the outro. I don't have it. It's there's no outro. It's okay, Claire. Look. Okay. The only well, person in the whole world that cares about this is Mark. Is Mark. I know. We won't okay. tell him. We won't tell him. We won't tell him that he'll never go okay. back and watch it. It's our little secret. Amazing. But guys, I'll, I'll hit end stream. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Our little secret. <laughs>